Okay, this is uh, video number two of uh, in my series. Uh, so you want to buy a pulse? Uh, one of the most important things I think is to have a good glass windshield. And uh, so when you're looking, that's a good idea. Also, of course, you want a good clear title. And I think I talked before about the VIN number being uh, on a plate and they're attached to the dash on the top on the driver's left side. Also, uh, of course, you want to know what engine you have. And I think it's better to have a water-cooled uh, Goldwing engine. But as I said before, some of the guys with the Yamaha 400 uh, they have fans they have put in these doorways, one on both sides, and uh, they probably have some other uh, openings in the back there. The more openings, the better, to get that hot air out. Another thing I would check, one important thing, is uh, this pulse frame is all steel, and it has a uh, front fork. It's pretty heavy duty. And then they also have running underneath, and I hope we can see it here, it's a round tube, and it's right here. And it runs from that fork all the way back to the engine frame, which you can't see because my seats are in. But you can see the tube there. And I've got it covered with black carpet. But it's just a steel tube. And the best thing to do is to pull that carpet right off and look and see what you've got underneath. If these vehicles have set outdoors for 20 years, uh, this tube could be rotted. And, you know, a little bit of surface rust is one thing, but if it's rotted all the way through, uh, you don't want this to collapse when you're driving it. So I would just grab a hold of this with your hand and squeeze it real tight. And if it feels mushy or anything like that, or you can hear it crinkle or crack, boy, I would uh, be leery of that. Now, some guys have taken their bodies right off their pulse, and they've put new tubes in. So anything is possible, but I would really examine that tube. Also, another thing you want to examine, of course, uh, are the outriggers. And these outriggers are... They too are fiberglass like the body and there's two parts. There's the top part of the outrigger and then there's this bottom part right here. Now what you want to look at in particular are these steel joints and the attach points for the outriggers. You can see there that there's a rod that runs into the body the main body of the pulse and uh, that kind of stabilizes it and actually this outrigger does move up and down as you're going down the road and there's big rubber grommets that are underneath the back seat and uh, these rods actually move back and forth but if you look at your at the pulse you're looking at to buy and these are all rusted and rotted that could be a problem. And if it's set outside for 20 years, um, that's bad. Now, my pulse was always in a garage. It wasn't necessarily heated and air-conditioned, but it was in a garage all winter here in Michigan. And uh, mine did have some surface rust on them, but when I was working on the pulse uh, and I had all the interior out of it, and I had it up on a hoist and I could... You know, I painted it with some um, heavy metal primer, which uh, just helps to save that metal. And then also in the back here, I did open up this compartment so we can look in and you can see the frame. And it's a good idea to look at your engine. Uh, if it is the Yamaha 400, like I said, some of the guys are running that. But... Uh, you could have a mechanic or you yourself could pull that Yamaha 400 out. And that's what happened in the case of this pulse. 
it was sent back to the factory and Ed Butcher put in the 1100 gold wings so it will fit in the cradle for that Yamaha 400 without too much uh, changes I'm sure it has to have some new uh, maybe a support here or there or a connection point welded in but uh, if you go to like a 1500 gold wing or an 1800 gold wing or maybe a Kawasaki or a BMW you might have to do some alterations and some of those larger engines you might actually even have to alter the body back here but this top piece comes off and then this is a separate piece these are both fiberglass and if you pull those both off uh, it's very easy to work on the engine and on my, on my 1100 gold wing you can pull the carbs out uh, probably if you were gonna change a starter or something I don't know you might have to pull the engine but on mine I could get the carburetors out so it's a really a tight fit but uh, you can work on them that way now my radiator is on the I would call the passenger side of the pulse around the right hand side and uh, I guess the most important thing is if you can take this off to look at your engine but if it's been sitting for 10 years you're probably going to have to at least uh, have the carburetors clean. Now as far as reverse goes uh, these later pulses did have a reverse which is all it is is a little gear that has a starter motor hooked to it and what you do is you pull a lever and that gear rubs up against the tire and then you hit a button which turns on your starter motor and it turns that gear and the pulse would back up very slowly now that works fine on concrete or asphalt but if we get out here in the grass or if you were on gravel or even if you were on a cement driveway that was going up at a steep angle that electric motor just uh, it will turn that gear but what happens is that gear just chews on that tire now this vehicle only weighs about a thousand pounds so and after chewing up a couple of tires I decided I wasn't going to use my reverse anymore and I just push it around because once it's in neutral this is very easy to push around or if I pull into a gas station or a parking lot I try to park in such a way as that I can just pull through uh, I don't know what else to say but if I come up with some more ideas I on uh, talking about these vehicles we'll make another video it's a cool uh, car it's just one that has to be worked on like any other antique vehicle and uh, although some guys are using them for daily drivers uh, in my instance I've got the Honda Goldwing if I take this to my local local Honda dealer he probably wouldn't want to work on it so you're gonna to have to find somebody in your area or if you're a Honda mechanic yourself then uh, you're good to go but um, you can find guys around uh, check with the motorcycle clubs they can point you in the direction of somebody that can work on Honda engines and uh, they're just a fun vehicle uh, if you can find one like I said before in 2010 if you can find a good original vehicle and uh, it's all there and it doesn't need a lot of major work like on the frame or the body you're probably looking in the neighborhood of eight thousand to ten thousand uh, dollars if you find one fully restored in good running condition then you could be looking at twenty five to thirty grand uh, which I think is pretty cheap when you figure that some custom uh, motorcycles you can spend forty fifty thousand dollars real easily uh, the only thing with this vehicle is you're gonna get a lot of looks you're gonna get a lot of questions every time you pull into a gas station it is like a magnet 
and it will draw a lot of people. So uh, you'll be answering questions. Uh, I hope this uh, answers a few of your questions.